You know? So you don't, the one thing right here, I'm going to put it right here. People better look a little deeper at Tupac Shakur. Oh, mm -hmm. Tupac Shakur, father was killed by the police. He was a member of the Black Panther Party. Tupac Shakur, mother was in jail when Tupac was in his belly. Tupac Shakur's father, godfather, is Geronimo Pack. The great pamphlet who's been locked up for 25 years for a crime he did not commit. They were after Tupac Shakur. And but nowhere will you find the evidence to make that analysis. They, and when they come at you, they say, he shot two off duty cops. He throw that on the wall. Then they say, okay, that might not stick. Uh, he messing with this girl. Slop, throw that on the wall. That may stick. Uh, oh, we got films of Tupac Shakur. Shot. Whenever you see a concerted effort to take somebody down, it's valuable when they take them down. And that's who Tupac Shakur is. And when they found out that they had made somebody who was based in revolution, who comes from a revolutionary seed, and is still connected to Geronimo Platt, he is not Flavor Flav. Mm. Okay. Everybody know Flavor been on drugs for years. You don't have to tell us that. That ain't nothing new. They look at the boy's behavior and say, man, Chuck and them better cool out Flav. Yeah. I know he on Do we know our We see him every day. Members of our family are addicted. Mm -hmm. So we know when somebody's on. <clears throat> Cowboys went into law enforcement. One of the biggest ones started with lousy Bill Cosby. And he played a CIA agent mm -hmm. called I Spy who went to other people's countries and overthrew governments. We thought it was cool. We think James Bond is cool. We think Indiana Jones going and stealing the wealth of another nation with his imperialist dog is cool. And we let our children watch that stuff as if it's cool. And then we wonder why they don't understand colonialism and imperialism. <laughs> it's the media diet. Just like I need to get rid of the ice cream and the cake. We need to push that out, and then we'll have something good. So they have all these police. Matter of fact, for entertainment, most of our people sit and watch police. Whether it's Beverly Hills Cop, whether it's Lethal Weapon. Oh man, we love the Death Wish series with Charles Bronson. I mean, we watch them all. We're like Hunter. We're like, all of it. We, I mean, all of us think of it now. It's all police shows. Given the police side of interactions within the community. And if your children believe that's the behavior of the police, it's like sending them out to the slaughter. It's like living in the jungle and telling them not to pet the lion. Do you think people in the jungle don't tell them, oh yeah, by the way, before y'all go on out, uh, don't pet the lions, all right? No, no, don't, don't feed, no, don't, don't feed the tigers, all right? You see if you roll that way, okay? That's a survival skill. So not to tell them the real behavior of the police, have them walking down the street like this. You look like a nigga that we just got a wire on, who's seven foot five and 160 pounds, but I'm only five three, sir. Get in the wagon. <laughs> Are you gonna read me my rights here? <laughs> if you don't teach them, then you severely crippled them. And they may never catch up. Because what you learn in your primary stages, then they got a thing called shit cops. <laughs> <laughs> By coons. Yeah. Queen Latifah knocked off her hat, her queenly crown, and went to skeezer. Mm -hmm. The only good man yeah. is a man who got money, take his money, and he sent him out the door. And ain't this funny? This childish. You know, Martin, all of a childish sexual situation. And if you behave that way, or if you think that way, and our people do, you can't get nowhere. You can't build a relationship. You don't know what a man is. You don't know what a woman is. You just say, well, what are you doing with her? Oh, Gene, I know you went with him, but is he better than me? What kind of question is that? What kind of question? And they had one where he was supposed to be sick, Martin. And he turned around and bent over and, and, and told yeah. him to put the thermometer, you know. And she said, no, Martin. That whole imagery, children don't know how to process that. They just see these imagery. And they're all anti-African. Mm. They're very, very bad. Then you have the music videos. On top of this now, you can understand the annihilation of the African image. 
They have these music vi videos that devalues the cistern in the TNA. Shooting body parts, have them doing the worst dances you ever seen. Making fun of a whoop, there it is, and all of this, and booty, and a man singing from this uh, uh, ceramic uh, buttocks, and he's sitting in the groove. I forgot the name of that. Uh, a rum shaker, I don't know what. Baby got back. Baby got back. Baby got back, and all that, and all of that. All of this, the children do not know how to process that. They say, if baby got back, I love her better than the the baby who's nice and love me in return, who will treat me nice and everything, but she don't got back as defined by the media. Oh, she's a little heavy. Oh, she's a little thin. Oh, she's a little tall. I want this image here that I see in these videos. Little girls want to see uh, uh, a gangster little boys. The worst boy your daughter, you, you ever want your daughter to ever meet. MC Light, I got to have gay. a rough neck. I need a rough neck. And the boys, look what Naughty by Nature and them has done with that media. They, they, their pants are pulled down, their underwear showing, their shoulders stopped because they have no seam. The shoes ain't tied, they go through the community like that. If that's not a signal to black men, go get children. I don't know what is. I really don't. I'm, I'm a loss for what is a signal to say, oh, freeze, we got to control the hood. What is the signal? What do we have to see? Little boys who are the powerful. Young boy, now these stuff ain't cheap either. They got an expensive fare, hundred fifty dollars sneaks that that ain't worth tying. Start wearing these plaid lumberjack shirts like these white lumberjacks, and with one button they scrolls through the community. Don't that isn't that a sign to say, oh yo, I stop it, hey bro, hey come here, hey hey oh, come here brother, what's that? What it is, man? Ba 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 ba. Yeah, alright. Yeah, yeah, but do I? Yeah, I tell you what, brother, just think about it, alright. You know, your shoulders should be back. I mean, you're a black man. Mm -hmm. You're the best there is. They don't sold you against yourself. King. Huh. Yeah, all right, man. <laughs> and it may register later. Huh. Everything adults told me didn't register on the spot. Right. No. But nobody's saying it. And then if the next man say, hey, yo, ho, hey, ho, <clears throat> it's the style, man. What, what, what style, man? You have a negative culture, man. It's synthetic. You know? <laughs> we got to deal with that. Then the TV talk shows, I call it PR, promo, and propaganda. The worst of them all, the worst enemy that you have is our city <laughs> He is the worst. He brings all the culture benefits in. Marky Mark, BC, we even have him. Millie Vanilli back home. Mm -hmm. Trying to save them. Then he sits up there with white women all up in their mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and then he tried, then he goes over and say, my posse, and then do some stuff with a white boy. He's a straight up punk who got paid because Eddie put him in a position to be used. You know, just watch it. And he sells white movies to his black audience. And here he is, Claude Van Dammit. You know, <laughs> yeah, Claude. Yeah. My new picture, yeah, throw some people around. And what do people talk about on a talk show? Here we are, in the hood, struggling to make ends meet. What well, they sit there? Ah, oh, heard you got a new house. <laughs> I bought a new house, you know, because my Lamborghini looked funny sitting in there. Oh, 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 oh. And you got a new film, yes. And here's a clip, you know. And they selling you stuff. I made a mistake. The number one purpose of the mass media is to bring audiences to advertisers. That's its number one cost. If you want to buy commercials, it's based on how much audience they have, how much it costs. Super Bowl is about a million dollars for 30 seconds. Because they can say we have 100 million people watching at least. Okay, the talk shows, and not only that, you got Oprah. Oh, yeah. And she's mentally damaged. You know, you got Oprah, then you have uh, 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 Jenny Jones, and you have all these people. Oh, yeah. They say, tonight on Oprah, a woman who married her cousin who didn't know if he was her aunt, but he was her uncle, but was living with his father on 75th Street on Oprah. And for you to have an appetite to that, something wrong with you, say, wow, what a show. Something wrong, something wrong with you. If you're going to give her 90 minutes to run that on you. And, and, and Oprah just sit up, she's just as crazy as a loon. <laughs> You know, she just as good. But then you have Donahue, you have Rivera, you have all these people, and they don't 
be talking about nothing, which again <laughs> creates an information diet of nothing. You sit the plate in front of you, and there's nothing that will partake that you can partake of, which will feed your political action, clear up your consciousness to say how your strategies and tactics should be developed to solve problems. You don't have nothing. The women are becoming soap opera queens, and the men think they're macho men drinking beer and waiting for the sweetest soccer team. See what they do with your mind? So they play it, and it's all annihilating our Africanness. Then is the free TV. That's free TV. Then we pay cable rates to see more of it. So we can see Leave it, leave it to Beaver and Andy Griffith again. <laughs> All this rehash stuff, reruns from the movies, and everything we will actually see again. Okay? Then there's pay for view. So you can see bogus fights and stuff, fixed fights and stuff for $30. Oh, we got his money, right? You know? <laughs> so it all creates what I call graffiti people. Graffiti of people are people who walk around with all kinds of stuff on their body. Yeah. Coca-Cola fashion. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know? But that's why they use athletes. They use a baseball hats. Starter jackets on all these racist teams. Yeah. Cleveland Indians. You know, Atlanta Brave. Florida Seminole. And all these rich white men selling you product. Mm -hmm. Children who can't even get out of high school in Georgetown across the town. Georgetown wouldn't even let them in. <laughs> he didn't even have some photo on black people. You know, always walking around prostrate. Then there's the things they I had a sister in New York had had a t-shirt on and said, uh, don't ask me S H I T. Walking around. I said, yo, sister, can I ask you something? <laughs> Coca-Cola, sports gear, college gear, sign on t-shirts, put on the cars, they got a big gun on the car, touch this car and make my day. Wonder who's driving that? Friendly guy, right? All kinds of stuff. Don't ask me. Then you come up and you throw, put the plugs in your ear, walk through the hood and be oblivious of your environment. We don't even speak to each other. Brother, well, I don't know how it is down here. Uh, but up north, you don't speak to walk past. Another African walk right up you. Your eyes meet and you go down. Hers go up, you go. <laughs> or you go, like somebody call you. African don't even recognize themselves. Don't speak to me. So it's all moving the politics of sports. In the politics of sports, you have Muhammad Ali. In the book, you will see how he loved white women. Don't do that, did you? Mm -hmm. You know, read Jim Brown's book. And read about Jim Brown, how you know it. You know, quickly. I hate to read these things, but this is important. This is from the new book. In his book, Out of Bounds, Jim Brown, he spends most of his time telling you about the sexual practice of rich and, and the infamous. Jocks can't help but brag about their sexual habits as if it has some relevancy beyond their tired worldview. Brown didn't count like Wilt did, he didn't count the number, but his relevations documents how important a nut is to him. His passages on his love for partying at Playboy magazine porno king Hugh Hefner's mansion turns the stomach. In the next breath, he is proclaiming he is for the struggle and down with the brothers. It is, it is the kind of mentality that needs to be kept from our impressionable youth. Listen to this big dumb junk suck up to white culture and decadence in his book. Quote, once I'm through the gate, he talked about Hugh Hefner's, I stop and gaze at the cattle-like, castle-like home, park, go into the front door, sit down, order the finest foods and some drinks, unwind, and let it hit me. I'm at the mansion. By the way, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air did a thing on the mansion two episodes ago. Mm -hmm where Hillary was going to get shot in the nude, which she did, and then went to Hugh Hefner's mansion. These niggas are crazy. 
Okay? He says, the mansion is paradise. Beautiful trees, beautiful animals, beautiful gymnasium, beautiful jacuzzi beneath the side of a mountain, beautiful bathhouse, shower, sauna, giant pillars, classical music, classical music, pick up on that. Long, deep, beautiful pool in which you can wear a, a bathing suit or not. And beautiful girls, 18 to 24, tanning around the pool, only in tops, only in bottoms, or neither. Mm -hmm. oh, Hef used to throw his midsummer night dream party. He enclosed, he enclosed the entire yard with a tent, installed two indoor discos, served shrimp, lobster, and crab. The Manhattan transfer would sing, white group. Mm -hmm. Clint Eastwood would be there, Steve McQueen would be there, all the Hollywood powerheads. And there would be the one guy, there would be one guy to every three girls. Keeping with the evening's theme, the girls would wear negligee, shorty underwear, exotic garters, and even if you were shy, a shy unit, you and didn't want to see their exquisitive gifts, you had a choice, and it was all right in front of you. That's Jim Brown from his book, Out of Bounds. Athletes are crazy, and their job is to lead our youth into that same world of decadence. European decadence. But yet, we see them as great athletes. Will Chamberlain, Michael Tyson, they took him down because he found out they were stealing all his money. You know, they took him down. His queen tried to tell him, I used to get on brothers for this. His queen said, hey Mike, look, my mom was managing my career. I know about percentages and ages. I've been going through your books, Mike. Where's your bread? He said, I don't know. She said, but Mike, 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 look, here, you made a hundred million dollars. Mike, you ain't got two mil in the bank. Where's your money, Mike? I don't know. And when she led him to where her money, his money was, which was not in his account, the whole media came down on her and her mother for telling him that and said she was the worst woman in the world. First of all, I tell brothers, first of all, they say, well, dude, she was just trying to get his money. Put that out there, brothers bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. And re got real in. He tried, well, if, he, if she wanted to get his money, she was his wife. His friends yes. in Brooklyn wanted to, wanted to kill her. They wanted to jump her. To jump her. He was ready to attack her. That's yeah. his wife. Mm -hmm. I didn't pick Mike Tyson's wife. He did. You have to respect that. And when they found out that he had fired his manager, and all of that, that he was even adopted by the mob. Custy Amato adopted him in his teens so that he could legally sign the contract for his slave. They used to didn't give him no socks and no robe, push him in the ring like a barbarian, make sure he didn't have no school. And when he found out, started making his money, they took him down. Okay? Jim Brown, Spencer Haywood, any man, he's in the book. He's a fool, she's a fool. Okay? And they talk about her and Grace Jones kissing and hugging on the floor as white people sit around and watch them. Okay? And Spencer Haywood's book. Entertainers. You got Sammy Davis Jr. In the book I got them and I described a very important passage to me. Sammy Davis Jr. was a devil worshiper. And he said, I didn't really believe in the old cult. And I got quotes from him. Not what I say. He said, I just like the orgies with the white women. And he was supposed to be in Sharon Tay's house the day Charles Manson slaughtered everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to say Sammy wasn't there. <laughs> and he couldn't leave us until he did more damage. Okay? Miles Davis, I criticized Miles because I love Miles. But Miles was a contradiction. He would talk about white people, but he couldn't stay out of their bedroom. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't keep their musicians out of his band. We've got to get away from that dichotomy. Either you're down or you're not. Mm -hmm. You know? Nina Simone was straight out crazy. I loved her, <laughs> loved her music, her contributions in Young, Gifted, and Black, and Mississippi Goddamn, and all yeah. these good works of art. She still was an entertainer, and we accept them being crazy. She was, she, she was the kept woman of the, uh, 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 the uh, uh, Prime Minister of Barbados, and everybody knew it, dissing his wife, different, dissing their culture, and she went along, and she, now she lives in Belgium with some white men. The Temptations, I used them as an example of how Barry Gordy controlled, because you have to understand for Barry Gordy to understand Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, they're taking him down now because he can no longer be used. Mm -hmm. They tried to rally behind him. They gave him Oprah, they gave him the Super Bowl because he was used to help immunize our kids, and he was part of the New World Order uh, uh, exporting American culture 
uh, uh, black culture is American culture, mm -hmm. which they would then export Coca Cola and everything else. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? And I could go in there. I'm going to love. As a matter of fact, the chapter on Michael Jackson is huge. <laughs> and this is before I, I have to add an epilogue because they're taking him down, Michael Jackson. And people are crazy. People walk up to you and say, "Do you think Michael Jackson really this?" <laughs> <laughs> do you? Oh, Mikey couldn't have done that. <laughs> Come on, man. A man who mutilates himself, turns himself white, let mm -hmm. Dr. Frankenstein break his face, reconstructs it in the image of the enemy, <laughs> bleach his skin, I hang out with white little boys and Elizabeth Taylor, and you gonna tell me you're shocked? That's not the issue. The issue is why are they taking him down? Why are they telling you now? It's because he's made almost a billion dollars. He's been used to a slave pay. They never come. They make you rich. And like Mike Tyson and the rest of them, Muhammad Ali, they take the money back. It's like it's on a string. And they betray us for 10 pieces of silver. They don't even get to keep the 10 pieces of silver. You know. Finally, in solutions. Quickly, one, we have to become African-centered. That means putting your brain computer, thinking only in the interest of you, thinking on the basis of fact instead of emotion, because you can't follow nothing on emotion. Emotion dissipates and change. That's why people get divorced. I love you, honey, I love you, I love you. I love you so much, and then five years later, ah, you. <laughs> Emotions change. Intellect don't change. Love your queen intellectually, and it won't change because you love, love on the basis of what she do, what she mean to you. Love your king emotion, not emotionally, but intellectually. If she ever get to the point, that's love when you get in that intellectual thing. You get in that intellectual thing, you love her very essence of her being because people are what they do, not what they look like. That we must analyze everything. Everything gets analyzed. Everything, and it's fun. I sit and watch television with my kids and watch them bust them. They can, they can watch Thundercats, they can watch cartoons and say, oh, Daddy, did you see that? Look, and now this, they're using the third eye as an evil uh, 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 weapon, a laser weapon. They take out our pyramids and make it, pyramids are made in an evil base. They make a mummy, a monster, when he's our ancestor. And when your children can kick that back to you, you're teaching them right. Okay? We got to take the fat out of our informational diet, which means almost throw away everything. Then as information comes on Somalia, you process it different. And a little short trip to the library or somewhere will give you the background on anything. Because if you have no basis, I could say anything. That's why I always quote, uh, 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 quote sources where you can go back and check it out. Because I respect your intellect. We must expose the traitors. We never want to expose the traitors. I expose them all. You know, create an educational system. We need an educational system that goes from from kindergarten all the way up to graduate school. And there ain't no way anybody can tell us we cannot do that. You mean you mean to tell me we cannot put together educational institution for old children from elementary, middle school, high school, and colleges? You mean we can't do that? I don't believe that. We won't do it. We don't see the importance of it. So we let these people play in our children's minds, drive them stark raving mad, run into crack, drugs, Prozac, anything, or become so disgustingly bourgeois they're of no use to you. <laughs> and we say, Dad, you jive. Children are socialized. You mean we can't come up with all the people we have in the sciences, in the arts, in African studies, I don't mean just to say what's Africa. I mean to be, we're mathematics. We invented math. Michael Jordan flying through the air, dunk, doing a 360 in the air, and dunking a basketball over his shoulders, a mathematical computation with his body. Hmm. Little girls doing double dutch is a mathematical computation with their body. Little girls doing hand job is a mathematical computation with your body. Hmm. Music is mathematical computations. And then they, we let people tell our children, math is too hard for you people. Why don't you take something easy? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about schools that are computerized. Computers are cheap now. You know, we're building two in Philly. We got four. We got to build these schools and educate our own. Then we can stop this remedial work. You know, 
We know that it is a privilege to be an African. But we don't behave that way. We will. All over this country where I travel, there's people like yourself duplicating themselves, passing it on. The movement's on the move, but nobody's there to tell it. Because our media, those blacks you see in Philly and in, in Atlanta on television, is reading copy written by some strange white boy. Mm -hmm. And it's anti-African. The only time we hit the news is crime. Okay? So we need study groups to get together, and we need to start doing some practical things. Our children don't believe we're serious because we produce nothing to show it but ideas, talk, and books. Right. We need to build a little micro. We need co-op. <laughs> You mean we can't cooperatively get together little groups and buy in co-ops? Instead of going to the market and letting them fleece us? You mean we can't find out how to hook up the black farmers and buy cheaply in co-ops? You mean we can't put a little money together and start credit unions just for disaster relief? <laughs> just to starve to keep you from losing your mortgage? Here, here sometime all you need is $800. <clears throat> you mean we can't, we, we have no feel for extended family that we can do that? We haven't produced it. We haven't seen the importance of it. And those are the things we need to... Revolution, they have us thinking the mass media, and I'm saying this in clothing, has us thinking that a revolutionary with dark glasses and laid back and, and full of hate. A revolutionary is full of love. And revolution is practical, everyday things. A mother being careful and raising her children is revolutionary. Teaching him the right thing is revolutionary. Pop rumbling to the de defend the family and take him forward and working in concert with his woman is revolutionary. Working together with the neighbors in small groups, doing modest things is revolutionary because we have to be taught to work together again and not in competition. If you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, let me tell you, I'm Jones, you pass me. <laughs> so forget that. <laughs> right? Joneses ain't happening, you know? If all of us, either us, we're going to sink or swim. Homelessness in the community is unacceptable. We come from a culture that says extended family extends itself and doesn't allow people to go all the way down unless they're dependent on some substances. And we're going to have to find out how to do remedial things on them. Hey, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be in Atlanta. Was that over two hours? No. Oh, good. I'm not even quite two hours. Right. Oh, good. An hour and fifty-eight minutes. Um, <laughs> you got to deal with a question. It's right here, bro. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. You said you're going to name somebody in private and get together in an election. Yeah, I'm going to handle the name. In private. I'll give them to you. All right. I'll give them to you. You know why? Because there's a certain thing called criticism with affection. If we think we can, for example, I will criticize Michael, Michael Jackson because he's irreversible. He's not coming back. But we're still working on some of these people, some of these distributors, and some of these writers, and some of them are world famous. And you know, there was no accident that Clinton picked Maya Angelou. First of all, she's from Arkansas. How did she go from being down with Malcolm to being down with Clinton? Well, <laughs> money. Money. And then Tracy McMillan and uh, what was the, what's the sister that they carried? What's that other sister they just came to? Tony Morris. Tony Morrison. See, and they want the young writers to look in their direction. Again, they're the critics of who are great. I don't wait for nobody to give me an award for a book. I, you can hear it when the letters come back from the prisons and different places that this book has affected me and I've studied. But Dell, have you done this? And did you look into that? That means we're sharing information. We don't want awards. Awards will come after the, uh, 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 the war is over. And the only award we want is freedom. For everybody, you know? <clears throat> yes. I'm going to ask a question quite right, but <clears throat> that was a sister who came to not long ago to the Empress of such and such. And she is a native of this area. Washington. And she's a native of um, the Americas, mm -hmm. looking just like us. And, I, and I'm <clears throat> trying to reconcile the business of um, African. If we were everywhere, then what is it that makes us African? Well, no, she was an African, okay? What happens was, first of all, we traveled here long before these people. 
If you read Ivan Van, Van Sertema's, so they came before Columbus. Mm -hmm. And we've left monuments. Uh, the, the, uh, the Incas and them learned how to build their statues from the African. Then they have a thing called Olmec heads, which have been carbon dated to be thousands of years old. They look just like me and you. Then, coupled with that, is when we came over here, escape uh, prisoners of war, what they call slaves, always hooked up with the red men and rumbled back in the right field. They entered marriage, and there are books where many have became chiefs. So all we're fighting people, people of color are fighting the minority, mm -hmm. which is white supremacy. Mm -hmm. They don't care about Indians, nobody else. Now, what comes about is what the sheer death like Puerto Ricans are really synthetic people, all right? They came together recently through colonialism, through, through the Spanish, the Indians, and the Africans because of the way genocide rolled and how they then populated the African, uh, 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 the Hollywood Africans and the Spaniards. So they speak Spanish, they're into Catholicism, but many of them. Now a person has to tell you, well, I'm an African. I'll tell you a story. My brother has, <laughs> he was, he's a record promoter. He had Angela Bopal. I don't know whether you heard of her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She, was, she was being interviewed. He was a promotion man. And, and white people said, you are beautiful. What are you, a mixture? Well, she said, I'm a nigger. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he fell off the chair because she shocked him. She said, everywhere I go, y'all trying to find out what I'm doing. She said, I, I'm black, okay? Whereas you turn around, like Paul Mooney calls that woman Paula Abnigger, who, oh. who calls herself Paula Abdul, say, no, I ain't black. So you have to accept the culture, too. They may look like us, and you know they're African, but if they don't accept the culture, you're not going to push it on them. You know? So you're right, she, she had African lineage. And you know what they used to say, a drop of African blood. And they didn't just say that for one reason. It's because we dominate when we get in here. You know, and, and like Walton said, they scared of, of genetic annihilation. Well, that's a nasty way to annihilate them. Who wants to reproduce with them to annihilate them? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> we, we wouldn't survive the diseases. You know, we, we wouldn't su survive the diseases. And when they came over here, they were killing the Indians. They knew if they raped them, the Indians didn't have anything to stop the diseases. And they were killing them, and then they started putting smallpox on their blankets. So here's another people. My <laughs> words was that some brothers and sisters will say, I got good here because I got Indians me. You know, or I got cheap folk, as if Indians were a higher form, you know. I you have that, you, know, you have an Indian, good for you. put all this together to heal ourselves. What really immediate thing we need to do? Because this is really weighing us down. Yeah. Talk less to say that is weighing me down. Yeah. Uh, I'm very scared. I'm I'm just an African as you are. We everything that you say moves me want to make me cry. Really. Because every day I go by in our culture, you do not pass anybody by without saying I yes. or good morning. Yes. Is it good morning with you? But I see a lot of my brothers and sisters just walk by. <coughs> just the way you say. How do we process all this information? What is the next thing to do? How do we use this to take ourselves out of this bondage? That's the question. Yeah, the, that's a good question. And the, the bondage and the whole basis of, of, of my presentation is the bondage at this point is all mental. <coughs> and it's mentally that we have to seize our culture. We're functioning in their cultures. You know, we have to put together There's two things. We have to find our way home. Extended family, African culture. And, and to be African culture, that don't mean everybody has to start wearing dashikis. No. African soft culture is vast. It's a way of teaching each other. Hip-hop is African culture, okay? It's so vast that you can fit in there somewhere. Then you must have an understanding of culture bandits, of how they take your stuff 
and use it to whip you over the head with. Then if you add one more step and say, and we have been dying by the hundreds of millions for over 20 centuries, we're in a black holocaust that gives you the immediacy. <coughs> then you say, what can I do? I have to stop on stage one. I'm not reacting. I want to run off and get a gun and start running up down the street going, <coughs> you know. How do I help my brother's life be better? What about medical assistance? How, that's why I was talking about co-op buying. That's why I say interfacing with black farmers who can't even take their goods to, to market. That's why I'm saying coming up with credit unions so that emergency, anybody in this room is three checks away from being homeless. Okay? So our nose don't go up at the homeless. You then say, I got a problem. How do I come up with the strategies and tactics to make sure this reality that I want freedom comes about? Then you have to educate your own children. You can't wait till people get grown and start making these great renovations mm -hmm. because then they tug of war and trying to rinse out and some may never get it out. We're so damaged by their culture. So once we say it's whacked and push it aside, we start building a whole new edifice of culture, a whole new beautiful monument of culture in our heart and soul. We start singing a different song. We start hearing our rhythms. We start seeing the beauty of our people. We start attacking those who would attack our women and our mothers. We start cleansing. We start talking to the young boys. Sometimes it's just talking. And they may, and we don't do it because we don't like being dissed. And they crude and rude sometimes. But a large portion of them will listen. And you don't try not to necessarily talk to them in groups. You get a brother off to himself when he ain't showing off for his friends. And you'll find out there's a lot of young brothers, a lot of confusion. And they suffer from a lack of love. The only thing I liked about Bill Cosby's show, the only redeeming quality that fantasy had, <laughs> was that he hugged his teenage son. Yeah. Pat him on the back. I always hug my teenage son. And I got children that's in the 20s, and, and I got an eight and nine year old. So, you know, you got to give them that love and that trust. And lastly, but not least, we have to be an example. What well, we want them to be. Yeah. We can't say, hey, you need to stop drinking them 40s here. Yeah. Oh, this wine's good. <laughs> or, 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 don't you drugs. This don't kill you, boy. Because you know? <laughs> you know? children do as you do. They don't do as you say. Mm -hmm. They watch you from, from cradle to cradle. They want to be you. They want to grow up to be you. And if, if, if you bring all sorts of things to them, children should not hear adult arguments. You make them insecure, and they feel anxious, and they cry, and they get in the room, they stop, they suck their thumb, they wet the bed. You say, okay, put the baby on uh, uh, the bed. Okay, good night, baby. You put him in the bed, you tuck him in, and he goes, oh, I told you. You know, and you can get down there. You know? Yeah, but honey, you know, you can do whatever, but they don't, then you force them to take a side. Mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, you know. You know, a lot of things we follow after these people. And don't raise your kids like white people. Mm -hmm. White people, kids walk up to them and say, Mommy, damn! Yeah. Mommy, damn! <laughs> I see that on television, I said, whoa! I can feel the backhand hit me in the mouth then. <laughs> Deservedly so. Because our culture says you don't diss elders. And we have to put the elders who are a wisdom resource back on their high esteem. Because we've become capitalists, Capitalism feeds on weak victims. So children and the elderly are considered victims. So you see crack addicts throw their children against the wall and cut grandma's throat for five dollars. Oh my God. So you, it's all in front of you, but the answer's all within you. And there's simple things. They ain't going out start these big revolutionary groups. That'll come naturally. Just affect the people near you. Say, come together. Start opening little businesses and little things. You know, black people are the only people that when they get laid off from their job, fired or whatever, they sit around and say, waiting for the white man to come and organize their labor. <laughs> they can't organize their own labor. Well, heck, if you're off, then we should have pools of people with skills who can go work on the elderly's home. You know what I mean? For a few dollars plus material. And take a couple young boys with you and say, you know what I'm about? As long as you know a little carpentry, son, you'll always eat. As long as you know a little uh, 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 mechanic, you know, as long as you know a little masonry, as long as you can work on a car, you'll always eat. 
But they teach him, kids come out, what are you? I'm a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever called a psychologist? Man, you know, I'll call a psychologist. Come, the guys there don't call a psychologist need any help. <laughs> you know, but if you're standing there with your tools, you know, you, you stand there long enough with our raggedy cars. <laughs> hey, man, this is my battery now. Let me look at that and slide them some money. Then set up a way to educate young people to feed themselves. Any doubt? Yeah. Yes, uh, I know if I say this, everybody's going to turn around and probably giggle. But it's a true fact. And it's a fact <coughs> that affects all of us here. If it weren't for depression today, we black people, all of us here, we would not get to be like this, get to hug each other. I would never get to know you. I will never get to meet her. Mm -hmm. I think I'm praying for this depression to go on. Oh, yeah. Hey, hold on, hold on. You ain't too far off as you think. Hold on a minute. Because see, even when there is no depression, mm -hmm. we don't want anything anyway around mm -hmm. here. <coughs> and we're far away from each other then. Mm -hmm. Look at what depression has done to every one of us. Mm -hmm. So my prayer is, even though you guys might think and laugh at me, I hope this depression goes on so I can get to know my brothers and sisters because oh, we are father apart. There's no doubt about it. Let me tell you another thing. I did a lecture at the Slave Theater in Brooklyn called Clinton and Pacification. The worst president you can have is one that black people like mm -hmm. because he's going to do the same thing in a different way. Now we say political foxes and political wolves. When we had Nixon we knew to be on guard and be together. When we hear Bush, we knew to be on guard to be together. But when the system say, let's trick him and throw in Clinton, who is really, really a member of the Trilateral Commission that's put together the New World Order, but he played the saxophone on us anyhow. He had my Angelou and the Negroes, Coretta and all them, ran to the White House and they had teeth. That's pacification, and we relaxed. But those of us, yeah, we need to feel the intensity. Marcus Garvey said, black man don't know himself until his back is up against the wall. That's exactly right. And I think we can feel the coolness of the bricks. Yes. You see what I mean? So a lot of times, if you pray for good times, we relax and everything. But when we pull together, we can rally. But first of all, we need to think before things get too bad. Okay. That's when you organize. Okay. So then you have things in place for when stuff get really funky. <clears throat> like I say, I, I, I can't deal with homelessness. You know, I, and all these brothers and sisters, how could you, you? And we know that they'll walk you by. But if we structure for it, we can arrest it here and begin to clean up. If we consider it a priority, we don't think it's a priority, then it won't happen. If we don't think a co op is a priority, do you know we go to the supermarket, we spend all this money with these overpriced goods in our own little private baskets. <laughs> And we go and peek it in what somebody else got. You know what I mean? And we take it home, and then at the end of the month, we, we borrow it and loan it. You know, when, if we pull our money together, the Asians swept in from Vietnam and Korea and them, and all they had was themselves and their culture. They huddled together with what they had and started open businesses. They knew the white boy wasn't going to hire them. And they, the white boy said, You want to do business? And we'll only let you do business in the black neighborhood. So they came in honor as the new Jews, mm -hmm. put their money, had their little shops, and they fight, they shoot people in the head. I mean, you know, they're, they're hostile, they're culturally scared of you. When they're more violent, if you, anybody know anything about Hong Kong, Seoul, Korea, mm -hmm. or, 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 or not the name, but Saigon and all that, them some ghettos, boy, they ain't scared of black. Young boys think they scared of them, but they come from hell, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, where people eat out of garbage cans and everything. So, they got these little stores, young boy coming in there, they say, oh no. And plus, the law going to back me up if I shoot you. Mm -hmm. right. So, hard times, we shouldn't wait for them hard times to start putting together some of these things. Very little small things that make a difference. We can't say them. And we can't sit around <clears throat> and, and wait uh, uh, for any, any superstars. Mm -hmm. The cult of personality, I'm working on a book called The Cult of Personality, how we'll sit and wait for the cult of personality. And we thought the cult of personality delivered us Jesse Jackson. <laughs> He's the worst nigga I ever met. 
He's an agent of the Trilateral Commission. Okay? And he goes where they send him. He's a sellout in the pulk. And don't like black people. He's from the deadly bourgeoisie who care nothing about uh, uh, black people and their struggles. And as long as you put him on television and Sharpton, all these pompous guys with these arrogance. But when he was running for president, you should have heard what he was saying. He's talking like an American. Well, we need to attack this country. <laughs> Nuclear came in. Hey, man, is that a brother? Jesse Jackson. Look at his work. Look at all of them. So that don't work. All that we did. The civil rights era was a good era because every era comes through a civil rights era when it petitioned the... Vietnam. We all start seeing the commonality of the sufferers in Kingston and the sufferers in the States. So he was growing. Malcolm had already made that. So they had iced him in 65. So this is the way it goes. So that era's going. Now, it's their job to keep you thinking nonviolence was a tactic. It wasn't a goal. He said, I use nonviolent tactic in this space. And this time, because I'm not in position to use anything else. Then when you get there, you say, I've taken that as far as I can with some BS legislation and some tokenism, which just put the bourgeoisie in place to help them oppress the suffering masses. See how they did it? And But then they opened a center for nonviolence. I remember when I was a kid, I used to sit at the television, and I used to look at black people. And then you'd be sitting at the counter and they pouring salt and pepper down their face and cream and mix it. White people jeering them. And you see, I, we're, I, we couldn't buy that, right? And the, the same black person, if you stepped on their toe and punch you in your eye. Yes. And what they were doing, they beat them with cattle frogs and sick of dogs on them. So when you got to Watts in 65, you burned it down. When you got to Detroit and Newark, you, and they said, oh, a new tactic. It will progressively create itself. <clears throat> Revolution is organic. It's done in different stages. The people in Sharpsville, in South Africa, were petitioned nonviolently when they shot them down and killed them. The children of Soweto that you see in Serafina were shot down. They were petitioning nonviolently. So obviously, if you're going to shoot Malcolm, and you're going to shoot Martin, I want to be Malcolm. Because I want to go for your head. No warrior going to say, well, let's get in a battle. I know I'm going to die, but uh, I'm going to overwhelm you with my capacity to love. You're loving the wrong people. Right. Right. They don't have no love. The only thing they know is no mercy. I learned that as a child when they used to, in Chicago, used to turn over the buses of children that they were busing in. And turn over the, why was we busing to get more white supremacy education? So we know that's wrong. But it's their job, the Jesses and all those people. Then they turn on each other. Abernathy turning on King and this and that. How they terrible people. Terrible. Anybody else? Let me get you to elaborate on that magnetic strip that's in the money. I, I'm not as versed on that <clears throat> as a lot of people. Not only the magnetic strip, but they're trying to put a barcode in your body. Yeah. To identify you with a barcode. In your hand. Yeah, you're on it with Apple already. It's the Bob Kissman song, you know. Mm -hmm. Just come on, you know. Speak on it. I don't know everything. Y'all know some things. Speak on it, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, just tell them what it is. It's an it's a, it's a, it's a economic barcode where nobody can buy and sell. Mm -hmm. and, and my Bible tells me it's the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. So they use that. That's why Bill, Bill Clinton got this, this blue card out. So when you start getting in for free health care, it brings up all your records of your hand. It is. And that's a sophisticated way of, of, of uh, taking a South African passport, which you know you got a South African pass, you got two of them. One, your social security number. Two, your driver's license. And they start, I don't know, in, in Atlanta, they start making you, because we got all kinds of names, they start making you put your picture. Because they, they have you ever been counted on the census? I have, me and my family, I don't know anybody who has ever been counted on the census. We have never told the United States government. Even my mother, 
Well, we're this, our economic status is this, there's seven of us in the house. And no, black people don't do that. So they always report you as 20 to 30 million when you're 60 to 70. But you never gave that information. They need to know. They need to know where you are. So they made you put it on your driver's license with your picture. They said, oh, they go Willie. Ah, his name is Goldstein. His name is uh, McClinton. You know, his name is Robinson or Williams, but there he is. We got him and then they just go through it and say, we got X number of black people here. They needed an accurate count. But now they got the barcode. You know how they scan your, your, your products in the market? They shoot your hand and everything comes up. That's South African pass. It was the United States who invented the South African pass. And it was the Kodak who came up with it. Get the information on ourselves. That's why places like black media are extremely important. They're critical that they survive. Okay? Yes. Um, I'm Sister Apertiti, and you were talking about critical things, things that are critical to survive now. Uh, myself and another brother who are Radio Free Reels, we do radio programming, and mm -hmm. we don't do the kind that you said was, you know, okay. the much. I hear what you said. Right now, we're involved in struggle with these homosexuals. Uh, a chick went on the radio and gave our ancestors credit for coming up with it. <laughs> we went on every radio on the counter the, on the defense of our ancestors, and now we're like national. I mean, national. I got to call another day for the village boys. I ain't mm -hmm. never thought. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but to date, not one person in this community has written a letter mm -hmm. on our behalf. There you go. Now they're getting ready to roll on both money, straight up. They're not gonna roll on me because I don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. And when I go, I'm gonna take them with me. Mm -hmm. The last show I do will be a doozy because mm -hmm. they don't pay me. But I think it's a crime for us to sit around these elections and things and be cool, and then when a bell comes up, ain't no play. Yeah. Yeah. You look back, ain't nobody there but you. Yeah. And maybe the sister right here, somebody like that, who they tried to mm -hmm. roll on so many times now that they gave up on her. Mm -hmm. It's a new thing now. And these homosexuals and these Semites have come together, and the griots is the worst thing rolling mm -hmm. in life. I mean, we get national attention. The radio free griots, you know, anti-Semitic, anti-gay. Oh, yeah. We anti-shit. We love our African people, and we will go down to the end. But it would be nice to be able to look around one day yeah. and see a letter from somebody or somebody to show up at a meeting that we tell y'all about, and you don't come. I just wanted to say that shit. Uh, and, 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 and that's, that's, very, that's very important, what she's saying. First of all, two things. One, first of all, the, the, the gay movement has more juice. They're organized better because it's come from their culture and their presidents and stuff again. Skull and Bones, which Bush belonged to, part of the rights is that you have to strip yourself naked and roll in the mud and then get stuck by another man. That's how it's a secret order. You'll tell anything else, but you're not going to say you from Skull and Bones because everybody will say, well, you got popped. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I, 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 but see, the whole deal, so that homosexual lobby has come to counter and what they call multiculturalism. That's another a front group. The station went multicultural before the homos came. Yeah, multiculturalism, <laughs> which means that they want to water you down. The, the, the homosexual lobby is now the pit bull attacker for white supremacy. Okay? Now, and, and the other part I want to say and they got a is that... Woman doing it. Oh yeah, and a, a black woman had a prayer, Planned Parenthood, mm -hmm. which came from a Nazi. The founder was a Nazi. Okay, the vibe is what, what I wanted to say is that every now and then, I, I get a lot of mail, which tells me the support I have. Cause sometimes your butt getting kicked, and I'm sure you can feel your butt's kicked. I mean, they kicked me good. I thought my book was out. I was going, I was going to this city and that city, that city. When I come back, I had enough money. Uh, 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 pay the bills and get the book out, we don't even get and then get on tour, right? So what what they did is they shut that down. So when they shut that down, you feel under siege. Now you'll fight the world, but after a while you get lumped. It is the mail and the support that I get from people that say, I dug what you did. You know, I dug the book. I dug this because I, I get enough hate mail. Matter of fact, I carefully open my mail now. I'm expecting to get a letter bomb. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? You have to be careful how you open your mail. Okay? But support is the thing that keeps the people on the front line going. Everybody can't be on the front line. We don't want everybody on the front line. You can't. No, we can't. Matter of fact, and, and, and I, I was against the uprising in, in, in L.A. I believe we should be sophisticated enough to have a hit team go in there and make a point. Ping, bang, pong. This is the voice of the Black Liberation Army. We pop three jurors 
from Simi Valley on the basis of this. They would be more scared of that than our women and children out in the street and they have to That's preach exactly right. When we get sophisticated, our militarily trained people will know when to make a statement. And that statement is more dynamic than burning down everything. Because they say, oh, they organized to hit us back. See, we got the black men live and women live in fear. You see what I mean? Now, when you're in the struggle, you don't live in fear of dying. You don't live in a fear of pain or incarceration. You live in fear of dying before you did what you came here to do. I mean, we all gonna get taken out one way or the other. I'd rather die young than to die 80 or old time. But, but you know, the vibe is, is that each, anybody doing something needs support. And we need to develop, and this is an idea to throw out, every little area where there's growing group of black consciousness, you need a newspaper to propagate to the people. Even if it's a modest newsletter. Because all the information we said here ain't going to be found nowhere else, and you know it ain't nothing but logic. It's no great thought here. And that's what you need. And then you can, oh, then a call can be put out that the, the griots have problems here, uh, black media is doing this and that, because we have no communications. Now, I can rail against white supremacy here, and we can laugh and have fun, but Martin tonight is speaking to 20 million people, yeah. anti-African, so we have to upgrade and use the technology. That's another thing. Uh, Yes, uh, peace and greetings, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is uh, Brother Amin Ra, and I just wanted to touch on uh, what Sister said and also uh, uh, make an announcement, if I may. Um, I don't know if many of you all know, but I had ran for mayor here in the city of Atlanta. And many, much of what we're talking about tonight, uh, we had put in our campaign. Our campaign was not uh, to necessarily win, although we, we did very well. Uh, but we still spoke to, you know, we wanted to call our people to struggle, call them to the next move of, of the liberation effort. <clears throat> I say that to say because uh, our organization, the Black Power Party, uh, is doing much of what we're talking about. But still, uh, and, and I'm talking about even among brothers and sisters who are on the radio or who are doing things out in the community, we have come publicly and privately to them many, many times and say, hey, look, we're doing such and such. Why don't, why don't we hook our efforts up? And we can't and we can't get that done. So I just want to say first of all that yeah, these this is good and you know getting out there in front of the television and, and all that you know Almighty God a lot blessed us to do that. But still, where was the activity? Now there was a small group of young brothers and sisters who we have been able to successfully take and and, and we're starting to groom them. We have a, an organization called the African Liberation Army, which does just what we were talking about, you know. And our motto is one white supremacist, one bullet. You know, uh, we're, we're very, very serious about. Well, don't announce too much, sir. Well, you know, I mean, but it's, you're in underground. No it's, more. it's been all. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, and, and the reason why we're doing that is because you know we sat down and analyzed. Well, uh, you know, because we have a newspaper too, and uh, it's small, but we want to get it out. Is what I'm saying. The problem is the reason why we couldn't get it out: lack of funds. We went to certain people who we thought could help us, asked them about certain programs that they had. Uh, uh, access to and said, I'll get back to you, brother. And then when they get, you know, I mean, all these different things. So now it, it's true, we need to get our back to the wall because I know that I've gotten death threats mm -hmm. from, from things that I've said. I've, I've said many things about homosexuals. If anybody has ever followed, has anyone ever followed my campaign at all? I did. I, I, okay. I mean, I said many things, you know, on behalf of our brothers and sisters <laughs> that we could have built on that, but we didn't build on it. You see what I'm saying? So, but, but still, but we felt like it's time to go ahead and do that because we, we suffer from this dilemma of the underground revolution. There is no underground revolution. We keep talking about underground revolution. And even in our newspaper, we, we put that in there. This, this brothers, you know, when you walk up to them and talk about, hey, brother, let's come on, get in the struggle. It's time that we take it, you know, up on a higher level. Okay, it's time that we get vocal with it. It's time that we send the word to the people and let them know we are actually winning. 
You know, that if we turn around, we got them, brother. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we need to get away from this underground revolution. I will announce yeah, to the fact, you know, that's, but but mm -hmm. still, if we, we keep talking about the covert thing as an excuse for our lack of activity. You see what I'm saying? And, and I, yeah, but at the same time, well, I'm, I'm not going to say. Right, right. I'm just, well, I hear I what you're saying. Okay. But I'm, st I'm still saying we constantly use it as a, mm -hmm. as a thing. And I say strongly, if we would just come out and do it, we have no problem. Yeah. So, so, and, and, and then we could have a covert level underneath that, because, you know, everybody don't need, but I'm just saying this, is that uh, speaking to the sister, and, 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 and some people know who they are, and I don't want to want to chastise anyone, but I've spoke directly to some people and say, hey, look, we're doing these things, we're doing just, we're training a revolutionary black army, we're doing this, we're, we're marching against the infrastructure, we have a, a network called Know Your Enemy, where we break down who the enemy is, what he does, how he does it to you. We got all these different things, but still it's at a very, because when you offer someone something to eat, like the young brothers on the street, someone goes, oh, brother, I get back to you, brother, I appreciate what you're doing, but they never know the amount of pain and stress that how you go to bed at one o'clock in the morning and you've got to get up at five o'clock in the morning because you need to make prayer yeah. to face the next day and you only get three or four hours of sleep marching on for brothers and sisters so I just want to put that out yeah. the announcement I want to and it's called the Black Power Party uh, uh, and we still out there as long as Almighty God allow will allow us to be out there and we're still growing mm -hmm. you know but uh, 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 so I want to say the economic program that we're putting out and we're starting it this week inshallah is the co-op the community co-op where uh, we've taken we're working with black farmers now the nation of islam has decided to hook up with us or we and we've hooked up with them on the economic program they're gonna uh, we have uh, uh, other community-based charity programs where we go and we feed children for free in the harris homes community center and we spend a day teaching them about their religion their culture their god so you know we're doing this we go into the high schools and talk about liberation uh, but we bring them an economic program the program that i'm trying to share right now is this is that 1750 a week we want we want all our brothers and sisters in the community to take and contribute seventeen dollars and fifty cents a week to get a, uh, to get two bags of groceries uh, from black farmers you know all, uh, uh, produce you know uh, 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 fruit and vegetables that 1750 is going to go to you know uh, out of it we're paying young brothers and sisters from the high school level we're giving them a percentage of the money and another percentage of the money is going to revolutionary type activity. The Nation of Islam has their programs, we have our programs, but one, we're taking care of uh, giving young brothers and sisters an opportunity to generate income. Two, we're feeding ourselves. Three, uh, we're also creating a network because everyone we go to, we can drop them some information, we can tell them what we're doing. This is a wonderful way to, to bring our community together based on food. Based, and, 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 and four, you're going to get more food from us than you get from the grocery store. And then five, again, everything that, you know, that we're doing goes right back into the community. So this is the program we're doing. I'm going to invite you all to sign up, if you like, uh, $17.50 a week. Uh, all the money's going to us, and all of it's going to be used properly. And uh, even if you'd like to you know, come on and do some other things and hear more about the Black Power Party, we're here. I'm going to, if, if I may, put this up on the table. And uh, uh, you all can sign your name and number and all that. But it's seventeen fifty a week. You don't have to buy it every week. You can buy seventeen fifty dollars, seventeen fifty dollars worth of groceries once once a month. But but just become a part of it. So at least tonight when we leave here, we can say, well, I feel a little better. My soul's a lot lighter because I've you know moved myself to some action. Thank you. Can I comment on what he's saying? Yes. You know, it's real nice for us to do these things, but I think fundamentally we need to learn to start helping in our own small groups. It's going to be hard to trust an organization like this because there's been so much adverse information on, mm -hmm. info, you know, like on organizations like this. So I think the best thing is, this, is that we get some type of a campaign where, first of all, black people, like this brother here said, we learn to speak to each other and we get a common bond and a common love so that we want to help each other mm -hmm. and then it can uh, probably uh, be propelled to a high, um, you know an area to where we could start trusting one organization yeah i agree because you know? i've heard so many different organizations out there who claim to have i'm not saying you know, yeah and it's not claim to have an personal. army or claim to and i've heard i've listened to i heard you on the radio once and i've heard a lot of other people call in and talk to you and say well we have an army and i heard you say well we, you know to get everybody together you know, we're going to need to come together. Perhaps people who consider themselves leaders of these particular organizations need to sit down and talk with one another. Get us to like the best each aim. other. Get us you don't want to come one-on-one, speaking to each other, trusting each other. Can I speak to that for a second? 
because this is one of the things that we've been talking about during the elections because, and I'm not saying this is an excuse, uh -huh. but I'm saying if you've been in the struggle for a while, if you have, there are a lot of groups out there. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are off on the side. There is a, there is a mechanism, and maybe we can go into this later, of how you can know what groups are doing what. This is why you need to be analytical. This is why you need to be involved in your community. So this, this we need to talk to each other, is what we've been talking to. We've been talking to each other all along. Brothers have been talking about you know, how even the young brothers and sisters talk to each other. Now, I will say this. I, we don't look for too much activity among the older brothers and sisters. We just don't. Because the youth, they think, hey, brother, I got a job, or this, all these other things. Uh, they're concerned about, well, how do I know what you're doing? And we'll come out to a meeting. That's all we're saying. <laughs> You know, you're not going to find out about everybody, but, but you have to, somewhere along the line, you have to make a sacrifice. Uh, 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 my organization uh, and other organizations that we're working with, the first thing that we decided to do was we started going everywhere. We went to the nation. We went to the Hebrews. We went to every, we, 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 and we tried to make a council of elders. Uh, we went to the Europe, but we, we tried to make a council of elders where everybody from every particular group, AAPRP, could sit down and just come together, and so they could form a vanguard because they happen to be the, the organization that most people know about, most people trust, and all these different things. But if you don't come out, is my point. If you don't come out to something, if you don't you kind of be involved, even with, even with the the, uh, the community co-op, I mean, what's the harm in that? You're going to get your you're going to get your food, and that's the way you can get to know everybody. But you can't keep doing it over here in the study group, or over there on the other side of town, or over there. But but the point is, you have to be willing. We keep thinking everybody's trying to come to us. You have to be willing to go out there and see what this brother's doing and see what this sister's doing, because some people are, are directly under an attack right now. And that's what we and that's even one of the reasons why we formed the Black Power Party, because there were people in our community who had uh, given so much to the struggle. Uh, but they had nobody to, to defend him, Brother Mukasa. He, he had given so much to the struggle, and there was a, there was a, 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 a rumor going around town that, that somebody had popped him. And we said, wait a minute, because we know that any time there's a rumor going around that somebody got popped, if they're not popped, they will be soon. Okay, so we said, oh, we, can't, we can't let this go down because uh, Brother's get, giving too much to the struggle. But the thing is, is we sit comfortably in our homes. We sit comfortably, and I, and I have to say this, you know, maybe a little emotionally because I know how it is. You know, where, where you're asking brothers and sisters to get involved and to do something and they find another way just to accept, to, to deal with, to, to just to, you know, overcome, if you will, the oppression that they're faced with every day. So you have to come out and be involved and stop just saying, okay, you have to give yourself to somewhere. If you don't, if you don't trust an organization, go to an organization that you trust. Or, no, form, you or form an organization and then, join the, and then join the network. Well, let's understand that, that first of all, we're waging a protracted struggle. And everybody's uh, uh, comfort zone is not in the same type of organization. But I do agree we should belong in some organization that's involved with problem solving. If they're posing an option. This group may pose an option. If your needs ain't satisfied, get together with some friends. And then, like you say, be analytical about the organization that you support. And then begin to problem solve. Some of the problems are the neighbor's problems, their children, and a couple people cross here. So we're going to move to those organizations. You know who's moving in mass. You know who's moving in smaller ones, but our problems is food, clothing, shelter, military protection. You know, growth and development. You know what I'm saying? My question is this: because if we're so diverse, and we're going to come up against a common enemy, each time there is a, a certain area, won't they attack? Okay, like if he has his organization here, you have yours, and you have yours. They're going to come at you separately, each, you know, in their way. Is there any way that everybody can stop wanting to be the Indian chief and exactly. be, a, you know, be an Indian and get one common strong bond so we can go yeah, that way? Yeah, well, you're going to have coalitions. So <laughs> remember, your enemy's configuration is a multitude of organizations that goes from one issue organizations but they all, all the way. Are in danger. We don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, but 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 be that organized. For example, if I if white people have a, a little league, little league and a PTA and a bridge club. They could make 10 phone calls and get 1,000 people. We have to make 1,000 phone calls to get 25. So 
There's different comfort zones, there's different religion, there's a diversity in our community. If you're involved with the solving of any of those problems and being organized, you can then begin, different organizations will collate. Some people will say, I can't get with him on the basis that I'm Christian. Some people will say, I can't because, because I'm voodoo. I'm the Buddha, or I'm this, or I'm that. But there are organizations we can get together, and there are basic things, then we can start talking. But to be disorganized, to belong to no organization, is a tragedy. You know? It's a tragedy. And out of that will emerge the people that you know are genuine based on the oppression they face, on the problems they solve, and their consistency. The only way we can prove is not through rhetoric. I can't prove nothing to you through rhetoric. I can only introduce things. Through practice, you will see over the years people who are consistent. And that's what I see. When I see consistent people, then I know they're genuine. When I see them go this way or that way or quit or whatever or become elected officials or whatever, <laughs> you know, that's a whole nother vibe. I really do not care. Excuse me. Hello. Hello. I really do not care how we get together. The the, the, the basis or the common thing we all want to do is get together. How we get there, I don't care. And I want it now. Yeah. Why I want it now is the fact that the more you get away from me, the more lonely I get out there. Okay? Now I'm beginning to see my people. They get so their own culture by foreign body. Okay? You cannot say, uh, uh, you cannot say, uh, 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 a Vietnamese flag on Vietnamese Independence Day for the Vietnams to come and buy from you. They will spit in your face and look at you. You go right there in droves to go buy your own culture. Shame on you. Every day this happens. I don't care how you make this thing work. But you better make it work or die like fools. It's two dollars cheaper though, did it? You get it for two dollars. That's right. Okay. Die like fools or have this thing made and don't start fighting. Well, the reason why it's two dollars cheaper, I'm just saying. That's you know, it's true. You. It's true. Yeah, I know what it is. It's two dollars cheaper is because they pulled their money in a business associate. Now, not only wait, that, wait, 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 not only that, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's not get away from. Let's get away from the people, boy. Our biggest disappointment, one, is your political leadership is traitorous. Your business people refuse to come together for common good. If they came together, even if one had a store at different ends of town, they don't come together. They're not directly in competition. There is no business associations where the businessman, when he starts floundering, can go and get a little capital, or that they pool their money to buy in bulk to get it to be $2. No, I'm saying. Yeah, that's the way it gets. We buy the book. I'm saying if you got $5, I can go get it for the Korean book. There is, there is, there is, there is more to that. There is more to that. Why is it a lot, why is a lot, a day a lot cheaper? Number one, you get to make bastardized goods. You make, you make, you make come in form of education, they get to give you, they get to give you bastardized education. I don't care what you want to buy here. It might be knowledge, it might be fabric, it might be your culture, it might be your history. When they give it to you, they're always going to give you a bastard of a form. They always do that. That is one force. But we, as a people, we are so gullible that we just suck it up. But it's only for us to go buy that thing and for the thing to yeah. fall out this next day. But watch that's number one. Your approach, your approach always is again. Mm -hmm. If we just say our, our people are gullible, our people are brainwashed. There's a difference. Okay. okay. Malcolm okay. says a child isn't born dumb, it's made dumb. Right. Okay. So after all these processes we went through, you make a gullible person who will buy and do anything. Um, if we if we 
unwind that yes. and open those eyes will be the only way we'll get intelligent. Let me let me run what I'm saying. Well, I'm going to say this. Hang on, let me just say this. We can only take one more question, and uh, this brother has his books up here, okay. and we'd like to uh, get you all to come up and indulge his brother's books if we can. One more question. Let the sister go in the back. I don't have a question. I do have a comment, though. Um, if you are actively talking to people every day, then you're doing that little bit that may be invisible, but it's phenomenal. Okay, because this sister right here and her husband, you know, I talked to your work, I talked to her at home. Believe it or not, what that does to validate you every day when you're out here with the people who are not conscious is, is, is just powerful. Keep your sanity. You talk, I talk to sisters every day who visit the Asians to get their nails done. Okay, now, wait a minute. Don't mock them because they're not conscious. Once you make them conscious, though, you need to be specific. They understand. They're not dumb. They talk. They, 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 they're condemning the Asians for being in the community, but at the same time, they're giving them their money. Until you make them conscious, then they understand, oh, I didn't know that. All y'all do is say, there got to be a sister in Atlanta that does your nails. Okay, my husband here, he works for the city. As you go about your day, it's not like you got to do something phenomenal. As you go about your day, do what's a part of you. What am, what do I do that I normally do every day that I can do now to validate myself and my people? Okay. That's all it is. Once you put that together, that develops into something real. Okay. Then you take control over your community. But if you're just going to sit and talk and, and leave it to someone else, know what am I doing? It can make a, it can make a, it can make a powerful effect. Then you understand who's conscious and who isn't. Not because of their color or because they wear kente, mm -hmm. because of who they validate. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I love myself better than I love that European. Mm -hmm. So, but but you have to put some action behind that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that makes you Afrocentric. Otherwise, it's not. If you're not validating yourself, you're validating some other ethnic group. That's right. And that's all, you, that's all you have to do. You take that anger that you have and you express it. And it does a lot for your stress level. <laughs> no, I just want to make one comment, no, please. Just one comment. Okay. Um, for myself, I'm a brother who's been niggerized and going through the process of changing myself. The three most powerful words that I found to start my transformation was, man, know thyself. Oh, and every temple you that's go to, our book that's store. on... The temple, and I said, "Wow, why is that everywhere you go?" Yeah. See, man, know thyself. So that's really the answer. Yeah. See, because, because to me, if you don't change from the niggerization from the process, mm -hmm. then how do you expect a nigger to go and uh, support a black business? You got to become an African first. Okay. Here at Shrine of Black Madonna, I go to Shrine, Mars Temple. You want me to come invite me? Because. Because I know what I'm doing because I'm getting to know who I am. So get to know yourself. Stop pointing at Michael. Stop pointing at Aretha. Point at yourself. Look in that mirror like Michael says. Yeah, Mike got problem, but Michael's giving truth too. He said, I'm going to start with the man in the mirror. But he didn't see the reflection. Right. But, <laughs> I, but he gave me the truth. What I'm saying is, he told me. I understand what you're saying. I went to the mirror. I went to the mirror. So I don't look to anybody else and say, but what are you doing? I start with myself and know that I have to change. Here's my institution I'm building right here. And I have an organization on Wednesdays that we meet. Uh, there's a few of the brothers here, and I'm very proud that we're here, and it's called A Few Good Men, because sisters say there were no good men. Yeah. So I said, well, let's get together. I have here, bro. Bro. But what I'm saying is, check that out. Hold up, oh, because this is very serious. We're not, this is no bullshit. We're in the middle of a revolution. And I was a person who was niggerized, now my eyes are becoming open. And so when I hear the brother, I'm in Ra, I said, yeah, I'm down with that. When I hear Mr. Farrakhan, I said, yeah, I'm down with that. So to me, everybody has an answer. It's not picking up one group. You support all of them. And if your spirit is true, then you'll know who's real and who's not real. But don't expect somebody to point out which way you're going to follow. I decide who I'm going to follow. No one else by becoming true. Not by coming out bullshitting and saying, well, I'm with the revolution, but then I'm going over here to uh, crow it. No, I'm saying build a black supermarket. I'm saying the Koreans there in the community, I mean, you got to go and, and uh, patronize it. Patronize black business. But like the sister was saying, don't 
penalizing our brothers and sisters because we are all victims. If a brother and sister is supporting a career in business, that's because they haven't been released. I can't penalize that brother and sister. I got to try to help to release them by releasing myself first. Because I ain't doing like the brother said an example. If you ain't the example, you know that you ain't got nothing to say. Uh, Kwame Kore said, if you ain't in the revolution, then shut up. If you ain't out there struggling internally, then just shut up and let people who are really trying to do it connect. That's all I got to say. Well, you said know thyself. That's the name of our bookstore. You're right. There's some dynamic. I have it on the back of my car on a decal. Know thyself. And people pull up next to me and say, you know, that's profound. I said, well, that's from the ancients. That's from the ancestors. Right. Tell us some Socrates on everything. No. 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 I mean, I know you're not, you don't yeah, have it'll stop once they know themselves. Matter of fact, all foolishness stops then. See, and that's why they, the, the system has to fight to keep you in chains to keep you in foolishness. So the foolishness gets even simple. For example, if Dr. Francis Crest Welsing says that they are mutants, that they are mutants, this think laboratory will say, we have to respond to her. So they say, we'll have their children wanting to be mutants. We'll make it, take it from negative positive. We'll come up with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And those Teenage Mutant, uh, mutant Ninja Turtles will be Raffaello, uh, uh, Leonardo, Donatello, and some other folk. The bad guys will be Rocksteady, which is reggae, and Bebop, which is jazz. And it's in there, res they respond to you. They're responding now when we get to the point that we can hurdle that and hit that barrier like the brothers say we know ourselves then all this foolishness we're talking about will be no longer an issue. We then we will start seriously building. So every city I go to, I see brothers and sisters like this, and each time I go, it's bigger, and there's more, and the letters come in more, and the questions are more dynamic. There's information that comes out of the audience that just don't come from me, because we're having dialogue instead of a, a lecture, you know, and you begin to feel real good about that. But the only way, you can travel there is that your journalists let you know what's happening in the rest of the world and there's no way you can find that the African movement so strong that K-Mark has moved in to try to seize Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. K-Mark, Spiegel, all of the white businessmen say, yo, you think you're running from Christmas, huh? Well, I'll take that. You know why? Because you created a holiday but you didn't organize to institutionalize it so that you benefit from your perpetuation of your own culture. When you went into Kente, they cannot make Kente. But as long as the people don't know themselves, they can sell them invitation Kente. They can sell them invitation mud cloth. Because they're cultural statements. So the more we lift our people's awareness, and sometimes say if you have a book, you say slide, uh, 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 slide it under. Say just read that chapter. Mm -hmm. Just read that chapter. I want to talk to you about it. Or if you got people who don't read, some of our people don't read, and that's most of the United States of America, not just black people. You slide a videotape in because they're visual. They'll sit up there and watch it. You know, if, if you have somebody driving, when you're driving to work tomorrow, slip this audio tape in. And then I, then you go back and ask them, say, well, what did you think of that? You'll know whether they read it or not, or listened. And then you have dialogue, and that's each one and each one. Mm -hmm. And we start lifting the con. You know, the consciousness, we criticize black people all day.